Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please remain seated. There is no cause for alarm. Now, we're going to rob you, folks, because that's our business and your fair game. If you cooperate, you'll lose some valuables in a little time. If you don't, you might lose a lot more. Now, me and my associates here are going to pass through with this little bag. As you can all see, it's empty. By the time I get to the end of the cord, I'd like to see it brim and full. Now, if you please cooperate, your wallet, please, sir. Thank you. Your wallet, please, sir. Your jewels, man. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, brother. That's right, brother. Think it over. May I compliment you, sir, on your decision? Your wallet, please, brother. Your jewels, please, man. Please don't take my watch. I've had it all my life. My father gave it to me. All right, you can keep your watch, but you can give it your wallet. I don't think your father gave you that. Your wallet, please, brother. Thank you, brother. Your jewels, man. Thank you. Not my ring. Not my ring. That's no way to feed a lady. That's right, man. You stand her. You'll, uh, you'll come around. Your wallet, please, sir. Chief United States Marshal by President Grover Cleveland. We were his deputies. This is our story. This is the way it happened. It was Chad Burns that held up that train all right. I saw him and I recognized him. In spite of that rag it was wearing on his face. I lost $30 in that hold up. I almost lost my watch. What I want to know is what are you going to do about it? Mr. Gentry, can you get on a witness stand and swear you saw Burns hold up that train? You're darn tootin' I can. Well, almost anyway. Like I said, he was wearing a mask. Then you can't swear as a positive fact you saw Chad Burns on a train. Whose side are you on, anyway? Well, I'm trying to be on yours. I'm only asking you the questions a lawyer would ask if we brought Burns to trial. That means you won't do a thing about it. Well, I didn't say that. Thanks for coming in, Mr. Gentry. You better pick up that fellow quick before he steals one of you lawmen right out from under those fancy badges you're wearing. I guess you boys better get down to Leaning Tree. Well, I know Chad Burns. He just races horses. Nicer fellas he'd want to meet. Gee, is that old plug liquid, sweet little mare of mine? How you talk, Wendy? Well, hello, deputy. What you doing around here? You came to see a horse race, Burn. I guess you did, didn't you? That laid into a heart, didn't you? Harley Tetzer, Harley Tetzer. Wendy, you take this sweet little thing down the stable, give her a nice rub down on the best match we got. You hear me? There's nothing too good for this little thing. Well, honey, you see yourself a horse race? I sure did. You saw me win, too, didn't you? You know there's no horse in the country can lick that little mare of mine. All right, everybody, we're going to have ourselves a victory celebration for me and my friends. You're, you're welcome. I guess you're my friend. Let's go somewhere we can talk, Kyle. Now, Burns, he came on here from Texas three or four years back. Had a herd of cows with him. He said it was his. With me, I don't know whether they were his or not. I just take your coffee. Want some molasses? I got it for Sweden. Oh, take it straight. That's for me. No man needs sweetening for his buy. I'll be going to share from this time. Burns give me a trouble? Trouble? No, he don't give no trouble. He's sweet as old pie around here. Talk like a preacher and acts like an innocent choir boy. I know for certain he's behind every bank robbery, stage robbery, train hold up, and express all his job between here and Kansas City. 
Well, if you know so much, why aren't you arrested him? I ain't arresting him for the same reason you have. No evidence. Just no one. No one don't hold up in court. Well, it seems like you should be able to get some of the local people to talk. No, they won't talk about Chad Burns. They know he's a thief? Well, of course they know it. Like a lot of old grannies watching a boy torture a cat. They know it's wrong, but he does it so cute and charming, they ain't sure there's any real harm in it. No, there ain't much use of waiting for people to change their minds about Chad Burns. <laughs> they think he's Robin Hood. You might as well wait for the cows to start giving beer. Well, they'd turn against him if he did something bad enough and they found out about it. He just ain't that kind of man, Uncle Will. If he is doing all these things, like Kyle said, he is doing it out of high spirits, not meanness. Maybe. Yeah, that don't excuse the doing of it, though. If he's breaking law, he's got to be punished, Heck. And we've got to catch him. <laughs> is dust to dust beneath the stars? But there up there is hard to hide. Tis dust to dust beneath the sun. But there, up there, tis hard to hide. Well, Dan, that was nice. Real pretty. Oh, it was your singing that made it, Chad Burns. Well, it's nice you say that. Dan, I don't imagine things are going too well down to your place, are they? Well, that's the truth. But I ain't fixing my mouth for no handout. Well, who talks about handouts among friends? This is a down payment on my wedding. <laughs> All right, everybody. The drinks are on Chad Burns. <laughs> well, me and my gal are going out for a little ride, so you folks stay here and uh, enjoy yourselves, you hear? <laughs> That's a blessing. The yeah, no government bothers with Julie Ketri. He's the one person he thinks more of than he does himself. All right. You drive Julie on around a while. After it gets dark, you take on back to town. I'll meet you here in the morning. Keep your face out of the light. Don't let folks see you, but don't let it get too close. Don't you get too close to my girl, either. You know, she's just about the sweetest little thing ever was. Be careful now, you hear? racing mare and kissed his gal goodbye said see you soon my darling so don't you dare to cry the bank in petrie's full of gold from poor folks took away i'm riding out to petrie town to make that bank a pay Come 
down there. Mr. Thorne? Sheriff told me to fetch you. There's trouble at your bank. Who are you? Stand out where I can see you. Wait. I'll be right down. You reckon you see enough of you to remember? No, I don't think so. It's pretty dark. What's wrong with the bank? What kind of devilment is this? Mr. Thorne, is that any way to talk to a fella that come all the way through Petrie just to rob your bank? Uh, uh, come on, Mr. Thorne. I don't deny that. Sure. Dainey's a pretty girl and twice as twitchy. You ought to know about that, Chad. <laughs> I don't deny that either. Yeah, thoroughbred will run a mile, three quarters, maybe two miles. Run like the wind. That's right. But you take a cold bread like that little mare over there, over a quarter mile, she'll make a thoroughbred look sick. And after two miles, she's just starting to get a wind to run all day. That's yeah, the truth. When are you going to race again, Chad? As soon as I find somebody with the money, nerve, and horse enough to put her against that sweet little thing over there. Good morning, Deputy. Burns. Where were you last night? Where was I last night? Oh, I don't know. Um, Wendy, where was I last night? <laughs> as far as I know, you was around, Chad. Yeah, I guess that's it. I guess I was around. Let's go. Where are we going? The back at Petrie was held up last night. A man was killed. Somebody tapped him on the head a little bit too hard. We think you did it. So come on, let's go. Peaceful loving man, I'll go anywhere you say. What does he mean, a man is killed over there? Never you mind. If there was somebody killed last night, you can bet it was an accident. Chad never killed nobody on purpose. He's the kindest, noblest man ever come along. Where'd you get all the money you throw around? Racing horses. Where'd you get these? Raising horses. Bring in a witness, Kyle. Mr. Thorne, take a look at these gold coins and tell us what you make of them. Double Eagles, 1889 issue of the St. Louis Mint. Have you seen such coins before? Recently, I mean. Yes, sir. There was a shipment came to my bank at Petrie just the day before yesterday. Do you recognize that man? Honey. That's the man who made me open the bank safe last night. There were two of them. Mr. Thorne, how can a man of yours stand and tell such a wicked lie? Deputy, I do believe he's got me mixed up with somebody else. No, sir. No, sir. It was him. I knew him because I saw him once before. 
Mr. Burns wouldn't know about it, but I saw him once at a race down in Texas. Saw him real close. I imagine there are at least a dozen people know I was with my girl last night. That'd be uh, Julie Kittrick. Well, she's a respectable girl. I'd just soon not bring her into it. I guess we'd better talk to the Kittricks, Heck. Uh, well, you fellas all through with me. I reckon I'll mosey on back downtown. What do you mean, through with you? Huh? Lock him up, Kyle. Oh, ain't that a shame. By the doggies, I don't want to do that. Marshals, Mr. Kittrick. We'd like to talk to you. Is it about Julie? Maybe we'd better talk inside. Why did you immediately assume we came about your daughter, Mr. Kittrick? I've been expecting something like this ever since Julie took up with that Chad Burns. He's no good, Marshal. She's just crazy about him. I can't do nothing with her. Chad Burns says he was out with your daughter last night. He said they were buggy riding. What about it? We just wanted to know if they were together. For sure they were. Riding around, flaunting herself for that man, and him not bringing her home till after midnight. Did you see Chad Burns with your daughter? Well, sure. When he brought her home, I seen him help her out of the buggy. And that was after midnight? I told you, didn't I? We'd like to talk to your daughter, Mr. Kittrick. I'll get her. Julie, you're wanted. I'll have a word to say to her. You just bet I'll have a word to say to her, bringing the law down on me like this. You want me, Paul? I told you and I told you this would happen. These gentlemen are the law. You answer up to them and don't tell them none of your lies, you hear? I think we'd better talk to Julie alone, Mr. Kippy. Now, do anything you like. What can I do for you, gentlemen? Were you with Chad Burns last night? Maybe I wasn't. Maybe I wasn't. Why? I'll ask the questions. Were you with him? Yes, I was with him. Did anyone see you with him? Yes, I guess so. We waved to a lot of Chad's friends. And you were with him all the time? Well, I said I was. Miss Kittrick, do you know the penalties for aiding and abetting in the commission of a crime? I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, I went down south for to see my gal singing Polly Wally Doodle all the day. My Sally is a spunky gal singing Polly Wally Doodle all the day. Fairly well, fairly well. Fairly well, my fairy. All right, fairy. come on out of there. Pick up your things from Kyle. Well, you mean I'm free to go? For the time being. fellas none. You're doing your job like anybody else. I tell you, I would like to leave uh, something for that fella got killed over in Petrie. Fellow, won't you get to know me? Now, why did you take that money? Lock it up, Kyle. That's bank loot and evidence. 
Maybe Chad Burns' charity will help hang him one of these days. What's all the fuss with this shipment? By the guard. The midshipman. Oh. Oh, $100,000? Gosh almighty, ain't fixing to leave all that money in this office. It's overnight. Oh. And don't worry, it'll be guarded. Just sign that. Right in here, boys. That's it. Take it easy now. 